everybody, I'm Ben. And I'm Sam. This is Counterfeit Christianity. And the thing we're going to talk about right now is the idea of... The few. The, the few. We'll explain what we mean by that. But uh, I think it's really interesting that there's only a few. And like, we're not talking about Christians here because there's an absolute shit ton of Christians in the world. But uh, I, I think we want to differentiate the idea of a Christian and what we're calling the few. A few a Ancient few. Israel is a good example. That yeah. There'll be a lot of Hebrews, but there's only so many people that actually speak for God, you know, yeah. like, and they usually call them the prophets. Yep. Um, yeah. And then you have to remember as well, like, they, I forget the prophet's name, but um, he was crying out to God one day. It's like, well, I'm all you've got. I'm the only one. Yeah. And then God actually turned around to him and said, actually, in that city, I have another 7,000. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how big the city was. Maybe it was a million. Yeah. He's like, actually, bud, you know, I, yeah. I have another 7,000. Look, I love you. And um, yes, you're important to me, but there's a lot of other people on this planet too. I think that the idea of the few, this is this is my story of the few, from, like that my God brought me into and helped me understand. A, a few doesn't mean like two or three. A few means like there's not many true followers of Jesus. And I, I know people are going to say that like you guys are so egotistical, think that you're something special. It's like, no, everybody has this opportunity. But a lot of people hide behind religion and safety uh, and would rather not ha ha live in faith because it's so much di more difficult. Marcus Aurelius said that um, if you are ever finding yourself agreeing with the majority, it's time to pause and reflect. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that is so true. So the story with this with me was, I was like talking to God about it one day, because we're here in Brisbane and on, on the north side of Brisbane, and I'm like, God, there's nobody else. <laughs> I'm like by myself. There's got to be some more, like I, I want more. And I just felt to myself that there's nobody. But then God just brought people, a few people. Like Sam is one of those people who wants to be real, real relationship, real talk, authentic. And I had another friend, his name's Cal. We'll have him on here another time, sooner or later. Another friend that I have named Dan, he's down south a bit, but he's another guy. There's a few that I can name off my off one hand. You know that that, <laughs> that concept isn't unprecedented either. Yeah. Like when you had people like the prophets, you know they were definitely God's mouthpiece. They would definitely talk to God, like someone like Elijah. Yeah. Uh, people hated him. He lived out in the wilderness and you know ate grasshoppers and made shoes out of like leaves and stuff. Like you know usually when you're with God, the majority don't like you. Right. Yeah. And we we are fine. We find that, don't we? <laughs> Like we see it on, not only on our channel, but in, in, in real life. Like there's a lot of people who like what we're saying because it makes sense. But then there's a lot of, uh, it's funny because on our channel, the people that hate us the most are the Christians um, and the religious people. But and the, usually their comments aren't really refuting anything as much as it is saying about how great they are. And yeah. I've done this for 30 years. and uh, that, Most of our haters are Christians. Yeah. Everyone else is okay. <laughs> Well, yeah. if you dare to suggest that perhaps the Bible has been altered yeah. um, and that you need to use your own mind and common sense that God gave you yeah. to discern what is and isn't true, they go ballistic. Yeah, 100%. Because they worship the Bible because when you worship the Bible, you don't need to have any faith. Yeah. You don't need to think for yourself. You don't need to use this thing that God gave you. You'll just, you just follow the book, yep. even when it contradicts itself. Mm. A question that just popped into my mind is, how do we find the others? If, if you are a follower of Jesus and you're sort of sick of what's going on and you go to church and you're like, these people are, are deranged. They don't know God and they don't want to know God. Like, how do you find those others? You speak up and they find you, I find. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you talk and you say what you really feel yep. and certain people will note that and go, they may not support you publicly at the time, but they go, ah, oh, yeah. Sam just said that. I need to talk to him. Yeah. You know, or... Yeah. You know, you might even um, pull those feelings out of them. They might not even realize. A lot of the time we, we feel something or think something, but it's it's not quite conscious. Yeah. And you can awake that in someone and they yes. go, that's interesting. And they might have to stew on it for a while before it sort of, um, it's like you planted a seed, you know, and that seed germinates and then they go, hey, Ben, that stuff you said the other day, don't make that too sense. loud because they'll <laughs> kick me out of the church. But yeah, I agree with you. That's sort of like what we're doing here, right? I'm sure other people have different opinions of us, but like, we're not trying for anything. We're not trying to like build ourselves up. Like, I mean, we don't uh, want yeah. to antagonize the Christians for antagonism's sake. Right. Sometimes. Maybe a little. <laughs> C certain ones, yeah. Uh, it's but fun. we want people to hear what we're saying and go, oh, I was too scared to yeah. say that out loud. I was too scared to even think that because yeah. I thought that if I think that, that the really loving God guy will throw me in a pit of darkness yeah. and pain forever. And even yeah. the people who are realizing like the system is like holding on to them and like this, is, this doesn't feel good to me. There's so many like there's so many people who are done with church, but they're not done with God. And it's like that's what I feel like one of those true followers are like I want God, I just don't want this religious stuff. And um, a really cool way that I have learned 
to find those people. It's a biblical concept. It's like pray for workers of the harvest field. Continuously asking God to bring those people to you. And it's like they just come and, and you find them. Like I didn't do anything specific to find you. Like we just got kind of reconnected and happened to think the same things. Mm. <laughs> and it's like, and the same with this other guy that I know, Cal. He, um, it was such a weird thing. Like it was just something he popped in front of me because when my dad died, I was struggling and I just had someone to talk to. And mum said, I know this guy. I'm like, I'm not talking to some religious dude off that's what i was thinking like leave me the fuck alone and then what he said to mum, like mum reached out to him and he said i'll talk to him if he's going to be real and i'm like what and that just make that pricked my ears up and I, okay i'm gonna go talk to him because i'm all about being real if if you don't want to be real then you can piss off so that's what prick, pricked my ears up in that situation and it's like that's another thing i had nothing to do with it being real upsets people yeah in general yep you know people often live these curated fake lives and they expect you to to go through the same pantomime. Yeah. And when you're real and you refuse that crap, it makes them feel really insecure because they're like, oh, but he, I, I'm doing it. Everyone else should be doing it yeah. too. This person makes me feel small because I'm, I'm a walking lie. We need to be able to be uh, real and authentic and vulnerable with certain people. It's, in the Bible, it says, don't lay your pearls in, in front of swine. And that's 100% right. But uh, there's, I mean, God's not yeah. afraid of you asking a question. Right. You know, like God is truth and truth bears itself out. So if, if you're going to, have an opinion or a thought, even if you think it's wrong and you ask God, he's not going to send fire down from heaven like you're Sodom yeah. and Gomorrah. He might tell you you're wrong yeah. or you might realize that, hey, you're actually not wrong. You know, I, I found that when I was at church, I was trying to, I was told to think a certain way, but I would, I would keep diverging and thinking my own way. And I think that, wow, you're really thinking against God here, yeah. you know? And then what I realized eventually is it was God who was prodding me in that direction yep. in the first place. Yep. It's yep. God who was going, actually, they're full of shit. <laughs> This is it. And yep. I, because of the religious indoctrination, I felt like I was wrong. Yeah. You know, um, but God sort of gently pried you away from it. And getting away from church to me was like escaping white noise. I could yeah. hear God much more clearly. Yeah. Um, ironically. Yeah. I'm never going to say that God will not send me back to a church again, like a traditional uh, institutional church, but I, I don't plan on it because it's, it's Maybe not he'll nice. send you back like Jesus with a whip and you drive him out. <laughs> That'll be fun. Um, I'll whip you in the bookshop, bookshop on the way out. <laughs> Yeah, you better run. Get out of here quick or you're going to get whipped. But yeah, I think that the idea of there only being a few is so true. Like a few is not a few, it's not two or three. It's a lot. A concept that I have talked about with the, with my, with my few people who are around me is like the idea of imagine if we had 12 like Jesus did. Like imagine how much damage we could do to this <laughs> satanic world. We would just smash the shit out of it. Not physically, obviously, but just like spiritually smash it up. Because if the church was so powerful, it would actually mean something and it means nothing. I think but the idea of the church is actually to nullify God's power. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's something Satan has set up because if he doesn't, then what God really wants will actually take hold. Yep. That he puts something fake up and leads everyone into that instead. Yep. You know, yep. It's that verse about um, they have a form of godliness, but denying its power. Yeah. And that's it. And most uh, churches and Christians do deny God's true power. Well, it seems to be that way off of our channel from what we've experienced. But yeah, there's a few. Ask God to bring those people to you. That's what I have found. Like, just talk, tell God what you need. And it's like, and he will bring those people right in front of your face and you won't be able to miss them because they'll be slapping the shit out of you continuously. And you're like, well, holy shit, this is it. You should remember that you're made in the image of God. And so when you, and so are your thoughts and feelings and your, your conscience. You know, that, that comes out of God. Now, those things can be twisted in a way that they're no longer correct. But for most people, if you feel something or, or think something or think, hey, God, why would you do that? That's unfair. That's mean. You know, like, don't be scared to think it and think, oh, God's going to get me. <laughs> you know, you go, God, why would you do that? Why yeah. why'd you let that happen? You know, wh what's the go? You know, God isn't offended by that. That's how you grow. Yeah. And that's how you find other people by asking the questions because people who don't want to ask questions or people who attack you for asking questions you know they're not god they're not from god you know they're they're part of this world yep. and they're trying to make sure that people can't escape the the lie and the illusion yeah. it's this systematic world that gets lined up that you have to follow the rules in that's not god and it's everything's a freaking system isn't it you got the government you got school you got religion you got everything god's not a system he's a flow you flow with god you, there's nothing's lined up it doesn't and work. all those institutions all the uh, school yeah government, churches, you start asking too many of their own questions and um, particularly if people are hearing you and starting to change their minds, you will get shut down, you will get cancelled, <laughs> thrown yeah. in jail, yeah. censored. It's it's quite 
universal, really. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. As a kid, I never used to understand why free speech mattered so much. Yeah. You know, why it's such a big deal. Yeah. But it is. Yep. It, it really matters whether people hear your voice or not. Yep. You know, and people, the, the institutions want to keep you suppressed to maintain their power. Um, and if you speak against that, then you're weakening their power. And they, they, they really attack it quite violently. Yep. You know, they're really scared of it. Yeah. It happens a lot in our lives. I feel like they're attacking my son now at school with all these things. He's just being himself and they're attacking him like I was attacked at school. That's all Satan has. He has these worldly things that he can mess with you like on face value, but it never goes too deep. But it can take you down in this, in this life. Uh, it can destroy you and make life very difficult. Yeah, if you can, if you can do it with a few others, <laughs> then it becomes much more easy. It does. It does. Yeah. It's like um, you're in, you know, your idea of joy. Yeah. You know, it's um, glad to be with each other no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the truth. Yeah, it is. I mean, if one person is alone, they're a lot easier to to push down. So easy, you know. But yep. if you have someone who encourages and supports you, yep. the amount of strength that that gives you is massive. Yep. You know, and if you have multiple people, you know, it's it's yeah. um exponential. Yeah, and that's why I think if we had twelve more, man, we could just, just <laughs> it'd be like it'd be brutal, spiritually thrashing the shit out of Satan and his demons in this area. Well, I mean, there's the Bible verse about a threefold cord is not easily broken. Right, that's right. What about a twelve? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's it. Awesome. 12 that's tribes, it. 12 yeah. apostles. Yep. Yep. I think that's what's coming for us anyway. It's, it's a bit of, it's going to come. It could be dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a bit fun. Anyway. Anything else? I think that's good. It was fun. All right, see us. You forgot to add, yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs>